<laughs> Chris Bradshaw has said, Shane, you have mentioned that when you were to be a heel in ECW, you didn't know all of the details involved versus being a babyface. Along those lines, could you describe your philosophy on what it takes to be a world champion and how you approached the role, as I believe specifically as a heel? Uh, what was that guy's name again? Chris. Chris Bradshaw. Chris. Chris, a great, great question. Uh, uh, like I said a second ago, I'd always wanted to learn every aspect of my sport before I got out of it. And uh, baby face, uh, you know, heels didn't look like blonde hair, blue eyed guys, uh, you know, with 32 inch waists. So, or I'm lying, 34 inch waist. Um, who's, who's counting? Uh, so for me, going in naively, I thought that being a heel was just opposite of being a baby face. And if it were only that easy. Uh, it's much deeper than that. There's <laughs> layers and layers deeper than that. If you want to be a successful heel, I mean, you, like we, we joke about it all the time, but you could be the, the dastardly, snidely whiplash, he, he, he bad guy, which I think is sort of cornball. Uh, you know, I, I think the most dangerous heel is the heel that can look you in the eye and say, well, I, I killed your mother because, and fill in that blank and you go, well, I still hate the son of a bitch, but I get his point. That's a dangerous heel, right? That somebody could convince you of the evil was proper to do. Uh, and, and that was my approach to it once I understood what really being a heel was. And that was learned completely by Terry Funk. Uh, it, it was my blessing. And I've talked about this before in my career, having met Dominic and then Bruno and then, you know, working under Bill Watts and then Dusty and Magnum and all these great uh, Black Bard and all these guys that you know, were, were instrumental in my career. Uh, who better to have taught this young punk baby face how to be a heel than Terry Funk? And, uh, you know, I, I gravitated towards that. It's, it, and if you go back and look like the, the, the character that we've become, that we've come to know as the franchise, uh, he took on certain parameters, but early on, you can see a very two dimensional heel, uh, as I'm sort of pushing the boundaries on this guy and trying to figure him out. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the crassness was, was meant to be uh, a turnoff, uh, you know, so that it's, uh, you know, the, the, I, I had a teacher in 10th grade, my literature teacher, they used to have a th embroidered thing above her blackboard that said, uh, profanity is the sign of a mental cripple. And that was really my approach to the cussing with the franchise. It's supposed to show you this guy. Yeah. He can use a lot of big words and stuff, but he's just a jerk. Like he's just, he's, he's, condescending to the lowest common denominator instead of raising it up to the highest denominator. And, uh, you know, now today when I hear everybody use the F-bomb 10 times in a sense, I'm like, no, not, not what the intention was. Uh, but that character was fun for me because it was different. It was new. It was, you know, bank, blank slate. It's like an artist going up to a big slab of marble and going, okay, what can I carve out of this thing? Uh, it could be this, it could be that, it could be anything I want it to be, but you got to see it in the, in the stone. And the same thing for the franchise character was, okay, this is going to be a block by block building. And so I think like a year, year and a half into the franchise, you start to see that character really take on tones that were quite nefarious and uh, uh, off-putting. You know, you know, like I said, I he would trip the old lady. Uh, and if he helped the old lady cross the street, he would do it so he could trip her on the other side and take her purse. There's, there was no him would help the old lady because I'm a nice guy. Um, and, and that really was the approach to the character, to be non-redeeming. And, uh, you know, in that, I think there would have been a play at the end uh, for him to have a hell of a baby face run because he had been that stone-cold heel, as Bill Watts would have put it, uh, and, and Eddie Gilbert, uh, that he had been so nasty so so non-redeeming that now he's coming back to the light you know I, I like he's he's trying to find his way back to his earlier roots i think it would have been a hell of a story to tell that ecw missed out on uh but for me having been put with terry funk the the entire approach uh to the character to answer his question was to find this guy that was completely non-redeeming but not the the pussy heel uh the franchise is tough he's just not as tough as he thinks he is He's a great wrestler. He's just not as great as he thinks he is. He's smart. He's not as smart as he thinks he is. It's just, instead of the proverbial slip on the banana peel and get the pie in the face, soupy sales type stuff, vaudeville stuff, this was to be the guy that in 
the 1990s where wrestling where the where the culture was going this guy fit in the culture like a glove but if you peel back a veneer of that you look and see this guy's a scumbag okay he looks looks appealing on tv and he's good at what he does but just a little peek behind the curtain and you go ooh man like that guy whoo he's a jerk off and uh and that's what it was supposed to be a little more nuanced uh i you know there's times i look back and i like i told you before off camera uh, uh james there there's times i go back and watch my stuff and I go, oh why did i do that you know or you just see the worst of what you do but whenever i do go back and i watch those iconic moments of the franchise the throwing down of the belt uh the the halo incident uh, you know the stuff with francine I, there's never a time and i know what we're doing we're we're she and i are acting and but when you watch it, there's a real belief that this is a couple that these guys are involved, and you know. So I think we we were good at what we do. And I think uh, a few weeks ago, I just heard this news story: uh, uh, the superintendent that would hire me uh, back in the '90s. Uh, when I went to her office, she had told me about how excited they were to have me, and I'm you know, so thrilled and all the worldly experience that I had and the knowledge of my field. I later found out that that same lady had gone to a school board meeting and showed footage of me as the franchise to show why this this is the last guy in the world you can hire as a as a teacher. And this woman has a PhD after her name, so now you can see why I call them Fuds, Elmer Fuds. Uh, so, like, based on that, I, you know, James, you like acting? You ever seen Anthony Hopkins in a movie you like? Mm -hmm. Don't go have dinner at his house because I've seen him eating people in the movies. That's really how ridiculous this is. <laughs> and so it just underscores with italicized and emboldened letters why I call PhDs what I do. And I'm sure there's some out there that are taking offense at this right now. But my experience with them is book smart, world dumb. And that it, therein lies the proof. If anybody out there watching thinks that that guy, the franchise, is who Troy Martin is, uh, you're probably going to be pretty disappointed when you meet me because I'm nothing like that guy. Thank God. <laughs>